In this video, I want to show you how to use this template to help you with your planning when you're creating a breakout EDU game. So whether or not you're creating a digital game online or a physical tangible game with a locked box, this is a great way to help organize your thoughts, especially if you're collaborating with other people, so that you can think about all the different steps and make sure you have all of the resources that you need when creating the game. So the first thing you're going to want to do is choose a theme. What is this game about? What unit of study are you going to be focusing on? Then you need a game title. What's that catchy game title that's going to grab somebody's attention to make them want to play the game? And then with the introduction, you're going to describe the game. Describe the story in a few sentences. What is it that's happening that must be solved within a 45-minute time frame? Um, and, and what do these clues have to do with, with, the, with the game that you're playing? Um, so this is a real creative space to kind of set the stage and create a background for the locks that you're going to be creating. Here we have listed six different locks and codes for them. Um, you can use more or less depending on the um, type of game you're playing. You are somewhat restricted when you're creating a physical game because you only have a certain number and a certain kind of lock. Um, for example, you only have one directional lock, one color lock potentially, one three digit, one four digit. So. Um, You'll really have to put that into consideration when you're creating your game. But if you're using a digital game, then you can have as many different kinds of locks as you'd like. Well, to a point. So um, I'm going to try to explain to you what I mean by each of these different rows to help you to organize them. There isn't really a certain order you have to complete them in. But I guess for me, I usually start with area of focus. So if my unit is on different kinds of cycles within my science class, then one of those codes would focus on the water cycle. And then a second code, my area of focus would be the carbon cycle and so forth and so on. And this way, as you're completing that blue row, you know you're hitting all the specific points of the unit that you wanted to cover. For the yellow lock row, this is where I list what kind of lock I'll be using for that specific code. Um, again, if this is a physical box, it's very important to pay attention to this because you'll only have one directional lock. So once you write directional lock, you're not going to be able to use that lock again. And this is a great way to keep yourself organized so you don't accidentally overuse a lock. But again, on a digital game, you can have multiple directionals and multiple letter locks and number locks and things like that. Where it says code up in the black bar at the top, this is the answer key. So if it's a directional lock, perhaps the answer code is up, up, left, down, and that's what you would type in the space next to that code in the black bar. For the orange or salmon color row, for how do they solve it, this is probably going to be a little bit more narrative or bullet point than the other. You're going to write the steps that it takes to break open that lock. So step one, look at the image. Step two, identify a pattern. Step three, notice the directions within each image once they've identified the pattern. Step four, reorganize the image according to the directions. And the answer is up, up, left, down, or whatever you're going to use. And in the purple row, this is where you add resources. So for this example, what image or images are you going to be using? And go ahead and link those here so that they could be printed or digitally linked to your game. You're going to want to try to put as many of your resources as possible into this area so that you can stay organized and you have all of your resources when you're ready to print and create or when you're ready to go into the digital game and start adding and linking things there. So that's a general overview on how to use this planning guide. I hope this was helpful and I can't wait to see what you create.